Today, History X covers the crew that served aboard the PBY Catalina. How many were there and what were their positions? Thank you for checking out History X. Today, I am at the Commemorative Air Force Superior Wing, standing in front of this PBY Black Cat Catalina to talk to you about the crew that typically served aboard these incredible planes, as well as what their positions were. But if we're just meeting for the first time, my name is Ken Stano, and I am a World War II historian, mechanical engineer, and pilot. Typically, a PBY Catalina operated with as many as nine or 10 crew members, depending on the configuration. You had, of course, the pilot, co-pilot. There was a navigator, radio operator, radar operator. And depending on the configuration, there could be as many as four gunners. Two waist gunners, a tail gunner, which was also known as a ventral gunner, and if equipped, which this plane does not have it, but if equipped, if it had a bow turret, then you would also have the bow turret gunner. So that's where you got the 10 crew members. So let's go inside to take a closer look. Now, in order to check out the positions on a PBY Catalina, the Commemorative Air Force has this static display, Black Hat Catalina, that we can just climb inside. So let's get the door open and see what we can find. Oh man. So this would be the pilot seat right here and I mean, it's just it's just amazing to have this exposed to have this available to check out and see what it would have been like. Controls I mean, it's, it's tight. And if you think about some of the flights that these guys were on, that these pilots were on, six, eight hours at a time, tight spacing. Get you a look underneath. In the event of a bow gunner, you know, that would have been his position up front. The bow gunner would have to crawl between the pilot and the co-pilot. So, position number one, pilot. Position number two, co-pilot. So, you know, again, to just wonder what these guys went through. I'm in Minnesota where the weather is, you know, relatively nice. But when you've got sun streaming through these windows, even though the temperature is not too bad outside, it gets really warm. Now, imagine being in the Pacific when the temperatures would be, you know, 100, 105, 110, and to have that sun streaming through this glass. I mean, I'm hot right now, and it's what, maybe upper 70s, low 80s, uh, if that. So the conditions just, you know, must have been really, really tough preparing pre-flighting before taking off from a Pacific Island. Now, let's see if we can figure out where the radio operator would have been located. Okay, now in this middle section here, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe the radio operator was located on the port side, on this side right here. If you know for sure, please put a comment in the comment section below, because I'd like to get that part right opposite of the radio operator, you would have had the navigator as well as the radar operator on the starboard side of the plane. So again, like I said a few moments ago, if I'm getting that wrong, please put a comment in the comment section below. There was also a flight engineer and the flight engineer had a position in the tower that attached to the, the wing. So that would be this position right here. These windows are actually blacked out, but this would be where they'd be positioned. To be at altitude running <laughs> in a spot like this, pretty incredible. Pretty tight crawling through here.
Now, this particular plane doesn't have any blister bubbles on the waist. So, obviously, port side or left waist gunner, starboard side, starboard gunner would have been over here. But I got to tell you, it's just, it's just amazing being able to take a walk around, you know, a plane like this, just to have it available. You know, we talked about the bow gunner in the event that the particular plane did have a turret up front. They'd ha the bow gunner would have to crawl between the pilot and the co-pilot. Left waist, right waist over here. So what's left? The ventral or tail gunner. That is where we're heading. <laughs> You'd have to crawl through this hatch, lie on your stomach, and that would be your position back there. Pretty amazing. So when you think about how thin this aluminum skin is, and you're lying right there operating a 30 or 50 caliber machine gun. Pretty amazing assignment. Here it is from the outside. So you can see the step on the hull right down here and just past that position. This is where that flyer, this is where that person would have been positioned. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Sticking the camera up in here, you can see this door or piece of the hull would come down and seal, seal it up upon landing. It's amazing what these airmen were willing to do. Okay, so we, we talked about in the event that there was a turret up front, obviously that nose gunner would have been positioned right there. Walking past the wheel, starboard waist gunner right there. So there you go, the crew of a PBY Catalina and their positions. Now for me, it's incredible to see stuff like this on display. And if you have a passion for incredible World War II historic planes like this PBY Catalina, then please check out the link that we have in the description below to support the Commemorative Air Force Superior Wing in their efforts to not only restore, but preserve these planes. And of course, like if you did, subscribe if you haven't. My name is Ken Stano. Thank you for checking out History X.